For part two of brain glymphatics, we are going to look a bit further into the meningeal lymphatic system and its role in neuroinflammation. It has been determined that the lymphatic vessels within our brain meninges drain lymphatic fluid and cerebrospinal fluid and interstitial fluid within our brain's dural layer. Despite this location, there does appear to be direct access to our CSF itself. Multiple injectable tracers have been able to show researchers exact drainage pathways and location of access areas to the CSF for uptake and drainage purposes. The meningeal lymphatics also enable immune cells to enter the draining lymph nodes in the brain towards the deep cervical lymph nodes in our neck. It has also been confirmed that both superficial and deep lymphatic cervical nodes are the major drainage pathways of immune cells and macromolecules to the CNS. Drainage movement, again, is driven by pressure differentials, arterial pulsations, breathing, and something called aquaporin-4 or AQP4. These are water channels at the ends of astrocyte cells within our brain that are responsible for the movement of cerebrospinal fluid and interstitial fluid and creates a water homeostasis within our brain. Looking into this study entitled The Sleeping Brain, Harnessing the Power of the Glymphatic System Through Lifestyle Choices, published in Brain Science in November of 2020, is a great literature review that determined that glymphatic clearance plays a major role in Alzheimer's pathology. This literature review looks at sleep and other lifestyle choices that may have an effect on Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases. Waste clearance and toxin filtration occurs mainly during sleep, and it decreases an estimated 90% during wakefulness. This is due to a decline in levels of our norepinephrine while we sleep. This happens during our third end stage sleep, otherwise known as non-rapid eye movement sleep or slow wave sleep. This sleep accounts for only about 10 to 25% of our sleep, and it typically occurs during the first half of our night's sleep. Slow wave sleep is also known to decline with age after peaking at puberty. So we know that Alzheimer's disease is a chronic neurodegenerative disease, and it is the most common type of dementia. It's associated with increased amyloid beta proteins and tau protein aggregates that lead to plaques within our brain and neurofibrillary tangles within our brain as well. These proteins and aggregates are normally cleared by our glymphatic system. This suggests that our glymphatic system may have a protective effect against neurodegenerative diseases and Alzheimer's. We also know sleep abnormalities are prevalent in patients with neurodegenerative disease, estimating at about 25 to 35% of patients and may be associated with Alzheimer's specifically. Shorter sleep times are seen with increased awakening, poor sleep efficiency, and impaired slow wave sleep. One mouse study showed that mice who were sleep deprived showed a significant increase in amyloid beta levels as compared to mice with normal sleep. Another study showed that loss of AQP4 water channels and decreases in polarity levels was prevalent. But age alone also seems to affect lymphatic clearance negatively. There's a decrease in this AQP4 expression, reduced pulsations of our arterial walls, and decreased amyloid beta clearance. In mice, glymphatic clearance was seen to reduce by 80 to 90%. We also know that as we age, we breathe shallower, which will increase, uh, excuse me, which will decrease intracranial pressure and further weaken glymphatic clearance. In regards to lifestyle choices, this study identified six findings worth noting and discussing. One, omega-3 fish oils have been found to modulate glymphatic activity. Supplementation has been suggested to delay or prevent the onset of Alzheimer's and has showed improved cognitive decline in mild Alzheimer's disease. Number two, intermittent day fasting, a type of fasting where you eat one day and fast the next, has an effect on AQP4 and seems to have a protective effect on Alzheimer's progression. Number three, sleeping position. Position can affect fluid movement in the brain due to position effects on gravity. So patients with dementia are found to spend a much larger percentage of their time lying down supine or 
on their back facing upwards. We now know that glymphatic transport is most efficient in our right lateral sleeping position, sleeping on our right side as compared to supine or prone laying on our belly. Venous drainage into our carotid veins might be restricted by these postures and sleeping positions and that might be a cause and effect. Number four, alcohol. Prolonged amounts of excessive and intermediate alcohol consumption is associated with adverse effects on our CNS and dramatically reduces glymphatic clearance in mice. Long-term heavy alcohol consumption greatly increases our risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. In contrast, acute and chronic exposure of low doses of alcohol seems to increase glymphatic clearance and potentially reducing our risk of Alzheimer's disease. Number five, exercise. Exercise is wonderful for a variety of reasons, but it also improves glymphatic flow on a global scale and can help improve memory and cognition. It also appears to decrease brain plaques and neuroinflammation. This review states the recommendation of 150 minutes of moderate exercise per week. And you may have heard me talk about that once or twice before. Number six, lastly, stress. Chronic physiological stress is a common risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. And this can cause an accelerated accumulation and deposition of these amyloid beta proteins. It's very important for me to mention that this literature review identifies that there is no effective disease modifying treatment at this time. As new research emerges, you can bet that I'll be reporting it here and keeping you up to date. As always, with any disease condition, it is the best idea to speak with your own medical team about what treatment options might be right for you. My name is Lisa Berman Silvestri. I'm a physical therapist and a certified lymphedema therapist, and my goal is to make you lymph smart.